Hello, and welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of tools that I wish I would have learned about sooner from Harbor Freight. Um, they are less expensive, and for doing the plastic miniatures, even the resin miniatures from uh, companies like Fantasy Flight Games, uh, Zombicide from Simon, um, and other ones like that, are really good. Um, they're relatively inexpensive to help you get into the hobby plus they will last you a lifetime for plastic if you were going to do say metal miniatures i would recommend probably uh citadel would be a lot more expensive uh that's a games workshop brand they offer tools like cutters and drills and and stuff like that um or you can go to say lowe's home depot and be able to get pretty much the same uh, style stuff uh, or similar style but they'll be a little more expensive but a lot less expensive than Games Workshop I'm not putting anything down by it it's just that you know first time miniature painters you should not really go out and pay a lot of money um, there's some things that you can get at Michael's and at Hobby Lobby fairly inexpensive. Uh, they have 40% off coupons. Sometimes, depending, you might see a 50% coupon on uh, like regular priced items, which is really great. So, what I'm going to display first is, and all links to all the products that I'm going to show will be in the description of the video. Um, the first thing are these style brushes. They come in a pack of 10. Um, I didn't grab any of the rounds, but they'll have various different size rounds. Uh, like this one's a 5 8 right here. This one is a 10. And this one's a number 6. And the 6 is the size, like you can see. And I'll hold them up closer to the camera. Is that you can see that the 6 here is smaller than the 10. And the 5 8 is obviously bigger than the other two and these flat brushes uh, I would use for like painting tanks or anything that's very large uh, especially if you're going to do it by hand now there's also an airbrush that you can do but that's for a first timer you're definitely not going to not going to use that so uh, I recommend the 10 pack of these brushes and the reason why I recommend these is because that they're synthetic they work great if you're going to paint with uh, metallics because I normally don't use uh, metallics with my better brushes. I usually use these type because they're basically they're throwaways. Um, you know, once this gets all mucked up to the point where it's not going to work, I just throw it in the trash, and eventually, you know, I'll buy a new pack. Which I've had these since I started. Um, painting miniatures in 2015 so it's been five years um, haven't got a lot done I mean I got some done but because <laughs> it's motivation that's a whole other video on itself too but these uh, like I said I recommend these that way they work good for mixing your paint because uh, you definitely don't if, if you do buy really better brushes which I'll get into that in a moment um, you definitely use these to mix your paint, paint with metallics, uh, stuff like that, even used for dry brushing. I would not use the Kalinsky Sable Hair brushes for metallics or um, dry brushing. I mean, if somebody's had better experience with it, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I can look into it. Um, but definitely get yourself your set then this is like a set of 10 brushes I think now it's like 1399 they were 1099 when I first got them so they, they went up a couple of bucks so but these are a definite must for first-time painters now I did actually grab one here's here's one of the rounds right here uh, it's a size 3 uh, and basically it normally the tip doesn't look like that it's because I haven't uh, put it in the uh, the cleaning there's a master's airbrush stuff to clean these with which that'll be discussed here in a moment and usually you would make a tip out of you know uh, 
smooth it down to a fine point and then just leave it like that but I didn't do that with this and that's why I decided hey I'm gonna just gonna uh, one thing the, the the reason why I don't recommend these for painting like regular acrylics paints with it because and it's easy to show here uh, if you see how the the bristles are like split out like that what happens with acrylics is that as you paint and this will usually be in a point and I can show you that here let me grab these this will work is that this one's from Army Painter um, it sometimes they include these with one of their sets but as you can see Okay, you can see that the Army Painter one below has a fine point on it. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, where the golden one doesn't. And what happens when you paint with acrylics with synthetic brushes is that, that it'll fray, it'll split like that, and it'll start to curl backwards on itself. It will frustrate you. It frustrated me for the longest time. I was swearing at these things like you would not believe. And basically, my wife hated it. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, this is one of the, uh, army painter ones that, uh, I got from buying, uh, one of their, uh, zombicide sets and I use it for, uh, painting metallics, um, especially considering how small the tip on this brush is. Uh, but if I was painting like larger ones or something like that, I would definitely use this, but, uh, definitely use the synthetics for metallics in, in my opinion. Like I said, if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. And don't use your good brushes for that kind of stuff. Now, this is my normal kit that I use uh, at my desk. And it has various different sizes. I highly recommend the Art Bin brush. You can, brush box. You can make one of these yourself. Um, it's a pain. <laughs> I know I tried. Uh, I gave in and ended up buying one. These things run like $15 at most art stores. Um, I don't think Michaels or Hobby Lobby carries this particular type. They carry a similar one. Uh, it's a much smaller one. Plus, there's other ones too. And it's uh, totally up to you, you know, which one you want to use. Um, but I primarily use when I'm painting with regular acrylics is the Windsor and Newton, I mean not Windsor and Newton, Rosemary and Co. Uh, these are the flat brush. This is their Series 56. And they are a very nice brush. Uh, these are the two flats. Um, Sir Astro's Painting is the one that recommended a size 3 and a size 6. And, and there you can see the two different sizes. And these are flats. Again, this is for painting um, very large surfaces. Um, I do not recommend using these for dry brushing at all because uh, again these are you know like actual uh, Kalinsky sable hair and you can definitely mess these up and these are definitely cheaper they cost less than the Windsor Newton series 7 you can definitely buy those ones but they do cost more per brush um, if you want to save yourself a little bit of money I definitely recommend these over those and Sir Astro's uh, painting on YouTube. Um, that's how I, because I, I can't pick colors to save my life, seriously. So I basically use uh, anybody's video guide to paint my own stuff. I mean, I'm not a professional painter. I don't paint it for a living. This is just for me, for fun, uh, for definitely stress release. Because usually I, you know, I'm, I'm either listening to videos or if I, which I have tried to venture out on my own painting Doom, the board game, because um, I didn't like too many, there wasn't that many videos for it, and I'm not wild about their paint schemes. So, yeah. Um, another series that I recommend size, because um, I have used these a little bit. Um, Sir Astro switched them because the tips were not as fine. Uh, these are the Series 8 from Rosemary & Co. 
Uh, I definitely recommend three sizes for these rounds. A size two, a size one, and a size zero. Um, most painters are skilled enough to be able to use a size two throughout everything. Again, I've been doing this for five years, and I will be honest with you, I'm not even, I don't even think I'm an intermediate painter, really, to be honest with you. I still think I'm a toddler, but that's just me. Um, but definitely get a size two, and a size one, and a size zero. Um, unless you feel the need to, because here's the size zero right here. And they come with brush caps and, you know, I mean, these are really nice brushes. Uh, if you take care of them, they will last you a while. Um, I have screwed up and messed up. And as you can hear by the pause, <laughs> it was taking me a little bit to thread the cap back on there. Um, I also have uh, from earlier, this is a 10 slash zero. That means it's uh, it's 10 zeros. It's a really small tip brush. And as you can see, it's like really small. So basically that's for like finer stuff. And they say that the paint will dry on it and it will dry quicker because it's not, there's not as much. Um, belly to hold a lot of paint a lot of uh, paint if you use a retarder uh, like a glaze medium from Vallejo uh, or a retarder medium you can slow down the drying time and then you can use that I I typically use like the 10 zero the three zero and these are the series 33 which is what he, uh, Sir Astro started out with and I started with those and then I switched to these ones because I I, I definitely seen that the tips are finer on the eights than the 33s after you know he pointed it out and it's definitely helped um, I would definitely recommend if you're gonna buy these like I said buy a two one and a zero but remember take care of them yes they're less expensive through Rosemary and Co they are just in my opinion they're just as good because I also have some uh, Windsor and Newton brushes that were at the local Pat Catans in my area before they went out of business and I was buying those um, brushes and I think these ones are just as good they have a shorter handle the handles on the ones that I have because they're regular artist brushes I think they're like from here to this other gray piece over here they're really long um, but I would definitely recommend those because like I said they're less expensive um, for washes, I recommend the synthetics because really it doesn't matter. You're just slapping a wash on it. So definitely use the synthetics for washes and definitely use them for uh, metallics. The Kalinske Sables, definitely use for like your regular brushes to paint white, paint black, paint red, and whatever other colors, whatever paint range that you use. So that's that for brushes at this time. Now, the next thing I want to go over is I want to go over... Sorry, I'm not pointing myself at my microphone to capture myself. Next thing I want to go over are these sculpting tools. Now again, um, these you can definitely get at Harbor Freight for a lot cheaper than what I paid for them because I actually bought these from like Michaels. And yes, there was a 40% off coupon, but it still didn't come as close to what Harbor Freight sells these for. And these you can use with clay, with putties. Um, I use them with the green stuff, which I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, and you can use these to uh, like scrape off a little bit of uh, once you have your putty mixed up. And then you can basically you know then like put it in the cracks to fill in the seams between where two pieces meet um in multi-part forms the or multi-part figures the um there's also like uh like the ones from fantasy flight they're they're already put together but there's like seams where two pieces meet and it's hard to you 
you definitely want to try to make it look nice. So you can definitely use this to use the green stuff or any putty that you decide to use. Um, people have also used uh, like matte varnish and I guess like put it down in the crack and I guess it fills it in. And I'm not too wild about that. I actually like using the putty because that way it's solid and it doesn't... There's not a chance in my opinion that it will crack. Um, and plus not only that, but with a tool like this you can actually scrape the excess off which then in turn will smooth it out and scrape it off of the body of it so that way you're not leaving bits and pieces of it all over that there to harden but definitely um, if you're definitely going to work with putties I definitely recommend these and I definitely recommend those through uh, Harbor Freight because this is these like I said they, they it is so much cheaper there let me see if I can find... I think I dropped a couple of the putties that I'm using here. Yep, here's the other. Okay. So, one of the putties that works out really nice is Milliput. And you can get this at Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what it is, it's a two part epoxy that it's yellow, and this here, and this stuff's kind of old. Um, it still works, but, and what you do is you cut off equal amounts of both of these. You mix it together, and then that's when you use the tool, and you just take pieces of it and jam it in the seams to fill it in, and you know, if you scrape it, and if you wet your tools a little bit and wet your fingers, the stuff doesn't stick to them. And also, it helps smooth, like it when it wets the putty, because it'll be all thick. And then, like if you put a drop in, it'll thin it out a little bit, a couple of drops. And if you keep your tools wet, it actually turns it into a very nice, um, almost like toothpaste-like consistency, which is nice because it'll help it get it in. So that's um, Milliput. Like I said, you can get this at Hobby Lobby. Now the other type is what they call green stuff. And I bought like a huge bowl of it. Um, I definitely recommend that you keep it in your refrigerator so that it doesn't go bad. But I do keep a small amount um, next to my work area so that I have it so I don't have to run over to it. Um, but as you can see, it's a blue and yellow combination. You cut off so much of it that you need you pull the plastic protective coating on both sides off and then you knead it together until it turns green same way with the um, milliput that it, it'll change colors and you'll once it's a uniform color it's it's ready i think it, that stuff turns into like a yellow like a bright yellow or something like that but these two when they're mixed together they'll be green and then same thing with the tool scoop up a little smush it in that same thing if you keep the tools wet they don't stick keep your fingers wet doesn't stick to it this doesn't turn into like a creamy type uh, sauce like uh, milliput does but it still it still works great um, I recommend it you can get it on Amazon uh, just type in green stuff and it should pop up and I keep it in a little plastic baggie so that it doesn't get all over the place so that's the putties now what you're also going to need to work with miniatures um, especially the prep work and everything is a set of files um, these are great they are from again Harbor Freight these things cost like four bucks for these. You get a 20% off coupon, you save yourself like 80 cents. It's like $3.19 because they're $3.99. I mean, you can't go wrong with a set of 12 files like this. And it's got a bunch of different ones. Um, it has a triangle type here. 
Also has flat. Um, here is a round. This is a square, but it has a bunch of different sizes or a bunch of different types. Um, it has some flats. And this is, like I said, a great set. Again, wished I would have saw this because the set I bought was uh, from Cobalt from uh, Lowe's. And I also bought the handle and the, the uh, I think the, the files came in uh, this cloth holder and I had to get the handle because it has the modular uh, thing for like the magnetic bit holders for screwdrivers and stuff like that. So I bought the handle for that and sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how much I'm, I'm in a hurry. But these are definitely great for a first time starter. Four bucks. Fantastic. You cannot, you can't beat these. I mean, if you have a Harbor Freight near you, because I don't know what country if anybody from any other country is going to see it. I don't know what country, but I know here in the States, there's there should be a Harbor Freight, uh, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, you know, around. But I definitely recommend these for 4 bucks. I mean, you can't go wrong. And if they break, guess what? It doesn't matter. It's, it's 4 bucks. I'm um, sorry, I'm kind of looking down. I'm looking at some notes and stuff like that. So, But basically, yes, this these right here, are fantastic very inexpensive especially for the first first time uh modeler so definitely recommend those for you guys now another thing you're going to need is a craft knife and a pair of cutters and the first thing i'm going to go over is the cutters okay these are the flush cutters they're Pittsburgh 5 inch flush cutters. That's just what the name of it is. Don't know if they're made here. I mean, they could be made in Taiwan for all I know. So, these flush cutters right here is what you would use if something was on a sprue, and I don't have a uh, sprue with me. And what you would do is that you would take it, get it close to what you're going to snip, or even rest it on it if it has a certain type uh, design, and then you just clip it. These things are made by a bunch of different companies. Army Painter makes them, Citadel makes them. Uh, I think Gale Force 9 has some. If you go to miniaturemarket.com, they are more expensive. I think these things are like five, six bucks. Theirs are like more than that. Again, first time hobbyist getting used to doing this kind of stuff, especially if you've never cut anything, definitely would recommend these just because they are cheap. I mean, they're going to last you a long time. I mean, I think I've had this for a couple of years, um, a year or two. And like I said, they cut. And I mean, they cut flat. I cut, if you've ever worked with any of the Plano plastic storage boxes, you know how they have the dividers all on the strips with the little thing. Well, I was using a knife and I almost sliced my finger because I'm like trying to cut stuff off and pushing it and stuff. This here, I can get it in because of the fact that the... Um, it's flat here and it angles up like that. Got it in, snip, and I run my finger over it and there's not a sharp edge at all. I mean, it's it will cut flush to anything as long as you do it right. These are fantastic for, for six bucks, five, six bucks, whatever whatever the price runs. Like I said, it'll it'll definitely be in the, uh, in the description below, but definitely recommend these too. Okay, now, what you're going to need is a hobby knife. Now, you can do one of two things at... Um, you can either get a single hobby knife, or you can get a set that has blades and everything. And I'm going to show you both. Um, Harbor Freight sells an X-Acto knife individually and, and you can buy it individually or you can buy it as a set again links will be in the description it's a gordon kit i keep this with my um as uh adam from tabletop minions uh portable nerding kit it was a great video of his i have some stuff thrown together i have two sets of stuff i have some hardware and most of my other stuff that i feel that i'm not going to need when i go over to my friend's house to paint 
I keep here, and then there's stuff that I know that I'm going to need both, like brushes and stuff like that, and I've had enough that I've been able to come up with two different things. So for the, the portable um, nerding kit, as he calls it, I picked up this Gordon set. Again, at Harbor Freight, I think it's like 15 bucks, 33 pieces if my memory serves me correctly. I could be wrong. But when you open the kit up, and as you can see right here, it comes with, and there's a, a whole reamer or something like that that comes with it. Um, it doesn't fit in here, but I, uh, but I have it, I think, in, my, in, in the kit itself. But what this kit comes with, it comes with a plastic caliper, which I've tried to use. It's not that great. Um, the plastic's a little rough. I mean, I'm sure I could probably smooth it out. I never really need to use a caliper at a friend's house. I have used a caliper, which I did buy um, one from Harbor Freight again. But it's an actual caliper. Real, really smooth and decent, too. I really like it. Um, but anyways... I like these handles on these blades because they feel really nice when I'm holding them like this and I'm working on a miniature, scraping the mold lines off. Um, you could definitely buy Citadel's um, mold line removing tool. Again, you're going to pay money for it. I, if, As long as you're careful with an X-Acto knife, you can do it. And that's why I don't recommend kids do it. I recommend you know parents do it. Just, like I said, all this stuff in this video is definitely not for kids to do because they can get hurt. I don't condone that kids use this stuff, trust me. But I like the way it feels. Um, it feels really comfortable in my hand. And it doesn't hurt my, my finger, especially if I have to really press down. And on some models, I've had to really press down and my finger doesn't hurt. Now, here is, and this is what I started out with many moons ago before I even knew Harbor Freight existed. Okay, now normally this would have a blade in it, but I took it out. And it's an actual X-Acto knife. Because this is, it says X-Acto on here. And with this one here, it hurts my finger after a while of using it. Especially if I have to really push down to really get at something. And I don't, I don't like that. It, it just does not feel comfortable in my hands. Now you can, and if you buy this, this is just this one blade of theirs is like expensive, and it really is. And I've actually seen at Hobby Lobby that uh, Exacto is selling blades just like this, and it's just a single blade. The single version of this, which would be with this exact blade, okay. At Harbor Freight for six bucks. Just this one blade. And I bought two of those to keep in my work area over there. Um, but this one right here comes with, you know, and there's like three of these and then one round one. And I'll demonstrate that one here or tell you about that one here in a minute. But for six bucks, and then Exacto has the exact same setup and it costs more than what this one does. So. And I do recommend the Exacto like extremely sharp blades. They have like a gold. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it has like a goldish tint to the very edge of the blade there, towards my fingers. These are really sharp, really nice. I do like their blades. I do like their blades, but I don't like the their. I don't like if you buy the whole thing how expensive it is. Now for this one, this one's really nice. It's a rounded handle. It has a curved blade on it, and I've used this type before, and I actually bought uh, some blades that I have in another kit that I bought from Holly's um, when I lived in, lived in a different part of Pennsylvania. Um, I bought a couple of blades for those handles that they're curved like this, and what happens is like if you're doing a leg of something and it has curves, if you use this it'll actually take the mold line off and it won't flatten that round that rounded surface it'll just go over it really nice okay and no I'm not touching my skin so basically you know and it'll take the mold line off won't change the contour unless you really push down on it then yeah you're gonna start to change it 
but if you stay with enough pressure to get the mold line but not gouge down into it you'll keep the contour and it's really nice and i really like the curved blades i do recommend uh, getting a curved blade for it. I mean, I've used it on the, uh, and I, I know, I'm sorry, I keep looking over there down at the corner to see myself and what I'm doing. Um, but I've used this when I was working on the Bantha Riders for Imperial Assault because of the horns, and there was mold lines right on the horns, and the horns are segmented, and I used a blade like this to do that, and it worked out really great. Didn't change the shape of it. If I did, it was so minor nobody's going to see but yeah, definitely recommend that and as you can see it comes with an assortment of blades um, haven't really used them all but I mean you know this way here you've got extra blades for everything and it's really nice it also comes with a flathead uh, little screwdriver as you can see right there and all in all this is not a bad set for 30 bucks uh, like I said, if you don't want to buy this whole set, you can definitely buy the uh, just the single blade for, like I said, six bucks. So that's the blade. Okay, so now that we've covered um, some tools, I mean, there's going to be more tools coming out. Basically, what you want to do is that you need to remove the mold lines on the miniatures because you're going to touch them with your fingers, get your oil the oil from your skin on them um, after you've removed all the mold lines and you're happy with it you need to wash them once you wash them then what you need to do <coughs> is you uh, you're gonna need to, to, to prime them and then paint them uh, priming and painting will come in a different video I'll, I'll show you the different type paints and primers and stuff like that but your miniature is going to be this size now it's a little bit larger than some of the other ones that I have. Some of some are going to be a little smaller, um, but the point being is, regardless of size of your miniature, you know you're going to have a hard time seeing like the fine details inside of his chest there. And what I recommend for that, and I'll give you a size comparison. Here's the miniature from the Fallout uh, Wasteland Warfare board game from Modifidus. I probably pronounced that name wrong. Here's a Pez dispenser. Now, if any, most people should know, have or have at least seen a Pez dispenser. These things are pretty tall. You can see that that is a lot shorter than this. The detail on that is a lot smaller. But once it's painted, even at a distance on the table, it still looks good. Okay. So, to look at said miniature, to be able to paint the detail, I recommend. And believe me, this Harbor Freight, most places that sell these things are like 30 bucks or more. Here is this. This is a visor magnifier. It's five bucks at Harbor Freight. Again, 20% off coupon. Now you can only use the coupon on like one, the 20% off on one item. So you'll be making multiple trips. Now I don't know if you want to try to do multiple trips in the same day. That's totally up to you on that. I usually pick up things one thing at a time. The nice thing about this is not only does it have magnification there, but it also has internal magnification to give you a little bit extra boost. This is nice, and this thing is five bucks. It also has two battery powered lights on the sides. I've never used them just because the fact is that these don't put out enough light. Um, this is more for service work. Um, I used to fix electronics, so it probably would have worked for that. I miniature painters, you're going to have like a, a some kind of a swing arm type light, and I'll show you two lights that I have that I use. Um, I use the other one more, but this is great because, and I'm wearing glasses, and as you can see, it's covering my face. Okay, and then I'm looking at this miniature like this. And I can see the detail a lot better all throughout this miniature with these on my face. And it'll help you guide your hand a little better and everything. And that's, that's what you would use these for. 
and they can swing up so that you know they're not right there as you're looking at things so again uh, definitely recommend these five bucks fantastic and I have two set of them again one stays here one goes with me when I go over my friend's house to paint so that is the magnifiers now let me cover the lights since I brought that up this is the first one this is the one that you're probably going to use a lot and hopefully I can get the whole thing in the shot because um, the web I don't want to really adjust the webcam over there but you can see that it has a big base from the from my webcam that's over here okay and then this has springs that help hold the positioning plus it pulls it back up and basically if the the head will swing it can go up this way this is really nice um, I think I picked this up at Walmart for like 15 bucks this again this is really cheap if you look at Walmart you look at Ikea you can get stuff that's cheap I have one similar to this style but it clamps to the desk and I have that over in my painting workstation over here um, I picked that up at like at Ikea I think for again 10 15 bucks so these really aren't bad um, I definitely recommend this uh, definitely check it Walmart because that is where I believe I got it from the the other one is more of a desk lamp. Uh, has a similar base. The neck bends down, and you can turn it. Um, I also recommend daylight bulbs that actually say daylight bulbs on it. Yeah, I know it's covering my face um, because that'll give you your truest uh, to natural, the closest to natural light, like outside. So I think these were like five or 10 bucks. I bought two of these because not only was I using it for painting at first, um, then I built a light box, which kind of worked a little bit. Um, I saw it on a YouTube video um, and I used it to put light in and it had tissue paper and it diffused the light. And, and yeah, it's not bad because I have another one. Um, but you can use one of these, you can use the other one, or like I said, if you have a desk area like this, um, you can get one that clamps on at Harbor Freight. I can't remember the name. I mean, not Harbor Freight. They actually do have some at Harbor Freight, too, that actually have a magnifier with a fluorescent bulb in it. Um, you could try that, but I have a feeling that trying to paint the paintbrush is going to smack the, the light itself. So you could definitely, uh, I think I got these at Walmart, too. Uh, check Walmart and Ikea for something that will work for you. So, so now that you have, um, you got your knives, you got your paint brushes, you got your tools for the putty, putty. The one thing you're going to need is a wet pal or a palette. Um, you can pick up these cheap plastic ones, uh, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Five Below. Um, most places you know that sell paints of some type whether they're kids watercolors or whatever you can definitely buy this this here um, yes I know I need to clean it <laughs> uh, haven't cleaned it in a while um, get one that has as many wells as you can get because you're going to be putting paint in here water in here you're also gonna be putting washes in here and you want to you know try to keep it away um, you can either mix the paint in the well if you're just gonna like you know you're mixing up a color for something or if you want you can take a little bit put it here and take a little and then clean your brush off take a little bit from here and then mix the two together here and you can use it off of here um, but these are cheap and you can clean these up really good if you use um, super clean it used to be Castrol super clean but somebody bought it because uh, you know I don't know if Castrol's motor oil is still in business or not but they were the ones that created it I used it one time for cleaning taking the oil stains out of a dry out of a driveway where I was living and it worked fantastic it does wonders for acrylic paint I mean if you ever mess up really bad you can always fill up a little vat of uh, mixture I would say do two-thirds super clean to a third of water and just let this sit uh, the other thing you can do is at Harbor Freight it's 
either 79 or 99 dollars can't remember exactly what it is but there is a um ultrasonic cleaner and it's a large one it's like 2.5 liters i want to say it's 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 a big one you can put this kind of stuff in it um fill that up with it put this in it and let it shake and vibrate and it will just destroy this stuff right here but it will not hurt plastic it won't hurt miniatures because i had to redo my stormtroopers because they looked so so stinking bad um i i can upload a uh picture to my instagram account it's uh gary's hobby it's either gary's hobby or gary's hobby studio i'll put a link to it in the description as well um but I can upload a f picture of how bad, and that was with the bad brushes and everything else, and it was just, I was just furiously fighting. But you'll need a palette. The, another thing you'll need is some kind of uh, container to rinse your brush off with. Now you can pick these up. Uh, I picked these up when, again, Packetans was going out of business. Uh, but I do believe Michael sells these too. Now how much they sell them for, I have no idea. And what it is, it's a cup that you can unscrew the lid, fill up with water, screw the lid back on like so, and then open up the lid. You can dip your brush down inside. You can actually scrape it off on the plastic edge on the inside here to scrape off the paint. It even has a, you can rest your brush across it so that way you don't lay it down because you don't want to lay it down on the tip or anything you don't want to like mash it down on the tip i mean if you want to just like brush it up against the side to kind of span the the bristles out so that you can get the paint out of it you can do that and then when you're done close it up and if it tips over depending upon how full the water is it shouldn't spill but i i, I think if you put it too high it will definitely spill out but i mean this would be great for like kids and i think it's got to be like a buck or two but there's that now the other thing you can use which is what i use i use that whenever i'm traveling um i pick up these uh ball jars and i picked up a couple of these when pack Catans was going actually i picked up with like four or five um they're short little little guys they're not that big as you can see it doesn't hold that much water And you unscrew it, pop the inner lid, if anybody remembers when their mother used to do canning for uh, tomatoes and stuff like that. Ah, man, it formed a vacuum seal. And then, there it is. Your water, take it, swish your brush. I usually grab one of these ones over here. And usually what I do to clean it is that I'll take it and I'll just kind of like gently push it up against the side not like to where I'm almost forcing it over or anything but just enough to fan the bristles out a little bit and it'll and you'll see the paint drop off and then and this is what I would say now this is at the end and as you can see and I'll do that I actually formed it to a tip because it got wet um, that's what you would use the, the brush cleaner for at the end of the day, if you want them to dry, you can either uh, come up with a way to hang them. They do make uh, brush drying cleaning things where it's a, um, it's kind of a cup, but it's a lot shorter. And it has a metal wire that goes up and over and back down. And it has like a coily spring around the top of it. And then you just rest it in between the coily springs and it will hold it there while it dries. You don't want paint or water to run down into the ferrule because what happens is it'll end up causing the wood to split and eventually you'll start having the bristle hairs fall out uh, whether it's synthetic or it's <coughs> excuse me whether it's uh synthetic or natural hair uh, they'll start falling out so that's how you would do that and like I said, it's your choice. You can use plastic ones. Um, if you want to pick up some of these short little guys. Um, like I said, I, I, I really like these. Um, they're really nice. Uh, again, it just depends on if you're, if you're a little bit accident prone, I don't recommend it. If you're not, you can use these. Um, if you are accident prone, definitely recommend 
the plastic ones. So now, when you're ready to paint, and I don't have it here, and oh, I should, I thought I didn't have it. Here's the one, just the single handle itself from that knife set. Like, you can actually buy that because this is one of the ones I bought that I told you earlier. And it has a nice plastic rounded cap on it. And as you can tell, so I get the light to hit. I put one of those uh, exacto ones in. So, okay, so you got your miniatures washed, primed. You're ready to paint. You got your palette. You got your uh, rinse cup. You need something to stick it on. And what I recommend, especially for starting out, because like I said, it's going to be cheap as possible. These are about an inch, inch and a half blocks that you can get. And as you can tell, I've used this quite a bit. I've used it for my airbrush and I've used it to paint. And what you can do is you buy one of these blocks. You put a little bit of like poster tack to it. I recommend... I haven't tried the Loctite. I just purchased it. But I also use um, the 3M brand. And you can get that at Walmart. I think it's like around two bucks. Maybe maybe a little more. Maybe a little less. Um, but what you do is you just peel off the plastic with uh, either an exacto knife or if you want to break some off you break off a little piece of these from one of these strips meet it together and mash it on the top then what you do take your miniature and you stick it on there you might have to push down and twist a little bit to get the tack to hold it and there you go and as you can see from both shots, is that he's staying on there really good. I mean, I'm sure if I really shake it, he'll fall off. But So basically now, you're able to paint your miniature, and you're not redepositing oils from your fingers back on, if, other than the initial point of contact. But you're not, like, touching it all over, holding it at the base for so long, and your hands get sweaty and everything. So this way, this block right here, like I said, I think it's like a buck or because they sell them individually. Um, Hobby Lobby might actually have a bag of so many blocks of this size. Um, you could probably, I wouldn't go any lower than an inch square. Uh, I recommend the inch and a half because, you know, the wider bases and everything, it's nice. And that way, you know, you're not touching it and everything. Now, they do, there, there are hobby holders out there. There's a couple of different brands. Um, there's ones that look like they use, like, pop caps. Um, I don't know the name of that one. There's also one that uh, Redgrass Games just had a Kickstarter for where it's a, it's a handle that has a top that you can spin all the way around. And it has, like, it's, it has its own version of poster tack putty uh, that comes with it. I haven't played with it. I haven't tried it. If they're listening, if they more than likely, you know, I mean, if they want to send it to me, I'll compare it. Um, because the ones that I use are the ones from uh, Rathcore. He makes these hobby handles that it's a wooden circle that has a whole cork. And hang on one second. Let me grab it because I actually have some out over here. Again, sorry if I walked away. I, I have one that's out. Um, the other tack is this Loctite. Uh, haven't tried it yet, but it's similar to the um, 3M tack. Again, you can get this stuff at Walmart. Probably be your best place to get it cheap. Um, I haven't tried this stuff yet, um, but it's similar. It has it in strips, and you just cut off the pieces. It's four ounces. Might be more because I bought this a while ago. But I recommend this or the 3M brand. So here's the Rathcore uh, miniature handle holder. And I kickstarted this whenever they were coming out with the version 3. Um, there's this, and hang on one second again. Ugh. 
Okay. Sorry about that. Should have had these. My own fault. Now, the first type is just this here that if you take the scully off that they call it and this barrel right here you can take this off like so and use it just like this now you're probably thinking okay so how do you get them out you push on the bottom because it's in a cork and they make different corks. They make uh, this one split too, but this has a recess. And you can see it there for miniatures that have a one inch base. Okay. They also make ones that where there's no recess and it just splits. Now, if you pin your models because you're going to put them like drill holes and put them through a base like I've done on some you can put the pins in the feed or however on the ones that are solid you uh, open the split like this and then push it together and then drop it in here and then push it down and the pressure because it's it's slotted like this all the way around inside puts pressure on that cork which they do they do fall out i'm not gonna as far as this particular type goes the flat's not too bad um it actually holds it in pretty decently um i wish uh the guy at rathcore would just make that just maybe one millimeter thicker so instead of it being like whatever the diameter is from the inner part of the circle here to the outer edge if that was just one maybe even a half millimeter thicker to give a better bite onto these then that way when it's in and i'll demonstrate with this even though i've started painting it it probably won't fall out but i mean i have had it where you know because i did a test with one and i did this and eventually he did fall out now i figures you're going to make a liar out of me <laughs> but it might also be too that the bases are kind of tapered from the top down like that you know they're slanted it's slanted all the way around so more than likely that's probably why it's holding in uh, i know the imperial assault ones fall out easier anything that has a flat around the base instead of it being tapered uh, will probably fall out of these easier if you're careful even when you're holding it upside down like this they don't fall out i mean you have to really shake it for it to fall out so i um these are really nice um it's pk pro pk-pro.de to purchase these um, but this is the one type that, that that he developed for version 3 the other one which I've used a little bit but not a lot but it's probably going to change soon let me get this back together is that he made a handle a big handle And when I saw this, now these handles are not going to turn you into a fantastic painter. So don't think that, oh my God, I'm going to be able to paint really good. No, it's a tool to help you. So the barrel keeps these together so that this doesn't pull off. And then the scully is just a decoration on the end so that, you know, you don't hurt yourself or something. I mean, because it, it's not pointy, but, you know, I mean, plus it looks cool really does so so basically that also keeps it around here so that's this guy now this is the one right here this is the one that is really awesome let me pull that guy out of that one there and the nice thing is you don't have to remove the metal handle to get them out okay so basically this is a holder this is the base I mean, it can sit like this, but you take a chance. This a lot more stable. And it's contoured shape. It has a hole in there for the release because this one's different. If you take it and drop it in here like so. Okay. There's no open bottom to push it out. You need to use, I recommend the handle 
of a brush. You don't want to jam it like all the way in or something. You want to do it about in the middle. So you would take it, stick it in the hole, out in the middle, and just pop them out. And that was easy. This feels really good in the hand. Um, I'm not saying, I mean, I might have a touch of arthritis. It's not that bad. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But just holding this in my hand feels really good. And I paint with my left because I write with my left. And I hold this with my right. And this actually feels really good. Uh, again, I haven't purchased any of the other ones. Um, I guess I don't know the other manufacturers. I know Redgrass Games makes one, and there's another one that, like I said, it used bottle caps to screw around, which is kind of neat in a way. I don't like it because I just think it's too small. The plastic base that the cap screws on is not that thick. Um, at least with this one right here, like I can hold it like so and still paint. I can hold it like this and still paint. I can even hold it upside down. And that's the nice thing I like about the metal handle is because, especially if you're holding it upside down, you can do this. You're not touching the model. You're still able to paint upside down to see like everything underneath. And you're not touching the model. You can spin this around. You can also use this if you were painting something and you, your hand shakes, if you're holding it like this, okay and you're painting something you can actually use the metal frame to rest your brush and go up to it and paint you know you could just move your brush side to side i mean you could go like that but it'll keep you from going too far it'll also like i said steady your hand because i mean you know you're resting on that you're steadying it more than anything else and all you do is just go in and do that and i haven't tried doing uh the pupils of eyes yet but i'm going to <laughs> it's coming so basically um i would recommend starting out the cheap way with a block then if you want to move up to like i said it doesn't have to be this um like i said i kickstarted it it was definitely a while ago I got it. Uh, these things are great, in my opinion. Um, that's what it truly is, is my opinion. So you can start with, you know, the square block. You can move up to this one. That's, I want to say it's definitely a lot better than the block because, uh, you know, you can get different size. I think this is the largest one, or maybe this is the second largest. But there's also a larger, uh, there's three different sizes of these. Because, uh, see, here's this, the smaller version of it right here next to it. And as you can see, it's definitely shorter. This would you be used for like Imperial Assault or anything. I only used this one when I started painting this guy for Blood Rage is because of the, the wolf um, staff that he has there. The handle kept hitting it. So it's back a little further and it's a little taller. So, you know, you can definitely do, you know, any, any of these. Um, like I said, there's two other ones out there. I know Red Grass Games makes one. And I don't know the manufacturer of the other one, but they, like I said, it uses like bottle caps style. And the same thing, put your sticky tack on the plastic cap and then you stick your miniature on it. And it has a handle similar to this, except for instead of having to remove two pieces to get it off, it just, it, it has a plastic snap, open snap, and it snaps on and then snaps off of, of the, that cat, the, the, the base. And you can, you know, have it like this, or you can turn it around like this. But like I said, I don't know the name of it. I wish I did. Um, but this, you know, definitely, definitely start out with the buck or two, you know, little square blocks. I still use these today, <coughs> not to paint, but to uh, prime because you know I use an airbrush for priming, and I'm wanting to venture into more painting with it but this here is uh, 
definitely the best thing to start out with. This is what I started out with five years ago. Like I said, a couple of bucks a block. I think it was 50 cents a block when I bought it. It might be a dollar, maybe a little more. Um, check Hobby Lobby for like inch and a half blocks because I know they, they, in their wood section, they sell bags of, and I've seen bags of blocks of these. I just don't remember. I know they had them in different sizes, but I don't know if they had them in one and a half or if they went from one inch to two inch. But definitely check there because you might be able to get a bag of them for less money than buying them individually at Michael's. Again, you get 40% off with the coupon code at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. So whichever you want to do. But this is this is definitely the first thing to use to, to hold your miniatures so that you can paint. You can turn it upside down and paint. Um, stuff like that. So that is the holders to hold your miniature to paint. And let's see what other goodies. Oh, okay. So back to the brushes. And I will demonstrate even though that one doesn't need cleaned here is the master's airbrush cleaner okay you can get it in different sizes you don't have to get it in this size which I think is like uh, two, yeah it's two and a half ounces but what it is, is that you open it up and there's and somehow mine shrunk <laughs> um, but what you would do is that let's say your brush is dirty I want to say this is clean water but I'm not 100% sure and I'm getting water everywhere as always so okay I don't know how that happened but so what you would do is you would take your brush dip it in water now this is what I do I dip it in water so it's it's got a bunch of water load on it and I take it and I pat it down inside here because all this is is just nothing but a dry soap and I take some more and I stick it in there and basically what I do is that once I get I don't know how well that'll show up on the camera but once you get like water build up in there then I just take it and start swishing it around and around and around and around and around. She spins me right around. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I try to be funny. I succeed sometimes. Sometimes I don't. But you keep spinning it around, and then you'll start to notice that it's building up a white lather. Okay, and you can see right there that it has. Okay, and then what that does is that gets in there and that takes and gets all the, the dried paint, wet paint, all that stuff, and it puts it into, into the soap. And then you take a clean rag, and I usually just take it and spin it. Sometimes I might put a little bit of pressure on the, the, the bristles to pull it out. Okay, now it's also a preserver. Now for the synthetic hair brushes, if you want, you can just build up a decent little slight lathering of it. Not, nothing too heavy. Okay. I hope you can see that. There's a little bit on there, but not a lot. And what you want to do is you just want to take your fingers and just kind of try to, you know, make it into a point as best you can. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, hopefully. So you can see it's kind of in a point. And you just leave it like that, and what happens is it'll dry. And once it's dry, you know, it, it'll be pretty rigid. And then to loosen it, you can just take it, dip it in your fresh rinse water, and then kind of like swish it back and forth. Maybe even just lightly brush it up against the, the side wall of the container in the water. And that'll break it loose and, and, and everything. And then you'll be able to paint just as normal. Just you know, then just wipe it off on your your uh, your drying rag for your brush, and that's pretty much how it is. And I've cleaned a lot of my brushes that way; they work really well that way. Hmm, excuse me. Um, this is I want to say six to nine dollars, um, depending. 
And again, it depending on where you get it from, like if you get it at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, um, you get 40% off. Their, their standard coupon's 40% off sometimes because I get like 50% off of a regular priced item sometimes and not there and you can pick these up pretty decent. Um, but I definitely recommend this. This is awesome for cleaning your brushes. It works with, you know, your Kalinsky Sables, your synthetics, all that. So this is a definite must. Now, here is another thing that you're going to need. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why does he have stick pins? Well, I'm going to tell you why. These are great for multiple reasons. The first reason is if you have ever worked with the... Um, that foam core stuff basically what that uh, you can use these pins and you can stick them in and it'll hold them together although you would need more the flat heads not these ones these ones serve a different purpose this is when your bottles of paint such as Vallejo if paint dries in the nozzle okay you can see right there and what you can do with this is that you take it and you stick it down into the bottle okay and that'll unclog the dried paint that's in there and when you pull it out sometimes you'll get a little bit on it and that's when you take that and I mean these things a whole pack of these things cost like two three bucks again depending on where you buy it from probably get 40% off and you just hang on to it uh, again I carry two you know I have a set here I think I have a set in my portable kit uh, just because it's just easier that way and that's why you have to be careful about it because <laughs> I just spilled them everywhere I really don't want to stab myself with these because that'll hurt um, but yeah in this way you got plenty of stick pins you can use them for a bunch of other things too um, but my primary use is to clear clogs in the bottled paints and I have quite a few different ranges I have scale 75 Vallejo, Reaper, Army Painter. Um, I've even converted over Citadel to that. Um, you know, there's lots of paints out there. Uh, but I definitely recommend these two. Uh, again, they're not that expensive. So let's see. Um, and there's also one of two other things, actually, and I didn't. I can grab them out of my portable kit. Um, here is plastic cement. Um, it's from Tamiya. It's extra thin. Um, if I could get you... I don't know if you can see, but it's like really watery. Here. Yeah, this will work. But you can see it's really wa watery. This stuff would probably work for like um, plastic miniatures, uh, plastic... Uh, like I have an X-Wing from Bandai that's a snap tight um, that I'm probably going to glue. And I don't know if I'm going to paint it or not. I have yet to decide. But this cement will probably work for that. It doesn't work for resin figures because I tried. And either I didn't put enough, which is a possibility, or it just didn't work. Because uh, I was trying to glue a Imperial Assault miniature on a different custom base and it didn't stay on now then I switched over to and I have the Gorilla Glue uh, that has a brush uh, it's like five dollars and something at Walmart um, it has a not a very thin needle applicator but it has a, a spout that you can screw the top part off and you can like squeeze a, a drop or you can unscrew it like this pull it out and wipe it on a brush it has a big brush it's, I think it's 
I think uh, the Citadel version of their super glue that has a brush is like it's way expensive. It's like ten dollars and something, ten or more dollars. You only get like five grams, if my memory serves me correct, for the amount. You get twice that with the Gorilla Glue um, for like half the cost. Now, the only problem is I have had where those things have dried out. And I found a, I found a remedy online, hopefully, I have, I'm trying it out right now, um, is to ball jar again. I bought this, uh, I think it was like a dollar something at uh, Joanne Fabrics for this size. Put a little bit of rice in the bottom, put the bottles of glue in. The one with the dots, the one I'm using right now. The other one, I haven't even cracked open yet. And supposedly, from what they said, if moist, if if moisture gets inside, that's what causes it to, to start to harden. I don't know if that's true. I don't know enough about super glue. It's just what I read. But if you unscrew where my fingers are right at the moment that'll pull the brush out. If you unscrew this part, part here, then it has the tip applicator that you can just go and just like squeeze out. So um, I typically use the brush more than anything else. I'm not saying I have, I've done with the tip one time, but I'm trying the moisture wicking with the little bit of rice and this here, and hopefully it'll make my super glue last a lot longer. So all in all, um, you know, I recommend these two glues because um, I know I'm going to be using this glue on uh, Marvel's Crisis Protocol miniatures game when I get it. But this is, uh, those are the basic tools. Um, a lot are inexpensive. Some are not. Um, you know, like I said, uh, uh, these holders are definitely... You know, and, and certain other things are, are, are expensive. You can either go the single blade route, but I'm trying to give you like stuff that you can definitely use first starting out, decently inexpensive, without breaking the bank. Um, as far as paints go, um, I, again, that's a whole other story because I, I I have to like get like one of every. <laughs> brand that I have um, and not only that but I mean you can do it with the 50 cent dollar between 50 cents to a dollar acrylics from like Walmart and their like Apple barrel and I, ha and I have those because um, I did actually paint a couple of mini uh, some miniatures from my wife's monkey lab game with them and they turned out really good the only thing is it's because they are like way taller like their their scale size is similar to the Pez dispenser. Like, I think the, the, the officer in the game is about this size, give or take. The monkeys are, I want to say, this, but they're much larger. The detail is there because they're a larger figure. So using those colors to paint those worked out beautifully. And they look fantastic. And again, I can post that picture on Instagram. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Feel free to put them in the in the comments below. If you guys have any suggestions for tools that are inexpensive somewhere, whether it be, you know, Harbor Freight, uh, Michaels, um, you know, anything of the kind, um, you know, again, feel free to share it. I'm, you know, I'm more than willing to admit. Okay, so this is even cheaper, and it'll do the same thing. So I hope that helps uh, anybody wanting to start miniature painting. I look forward to, you know, reading your comments below. And until next time, have a good day.